Hi, good morning. It's Gene from Mavstar Observatory. As promised, guys, uh, yesterday in the video, uh, when we was talking about the video that Yaris had put up, which was the former or one of the previous uh, Greek uh, prime ministers or um, presidents there of Greece, uh, we'll have a talk about that in here in a few minutes. But let's have a look at the data from one of our superstars, Kendall, sent it over yesterday. He sent a couple of files. One was um, an Excel file, and uh, uh, we're going to be just for this, um, you know, video just concentrating on the raw data which was processed by me, and then updated, uh, sorry, updated onto uh, our pole shift uh, news dot com website. So uh, what we're looking at is the data that was collected uh, from the twenty second of the tenth to the twenty second of the eleventh uh, this month. So a complete month's worth of data. And what we can see is the data starts off where it pretty much left off at 60 uh, on the left hand column. Remember, it doesn't accurately uh, represent the amount of uh, micro Teslas um, to, to the exact one. Although uh, I've got to say Canada and uh, there is another one which is closely resembling the, um, you know, the field strength in that uh, area. Um, but the point is this is what we're expecting to see over Canada is a decline and we don't know quite uh, how that de decline is going to take place whether it's going to do it you know uh, part way through the month it's going to drop a little bit and then it's going to go back up and then carry on like that and we're going to see this um, pattern for months until we gradually notice that there's been a decline in the micro Tesla over that region but we do know that over the last seven years there has been you know a gradual declining of it and what we're trying to do is just bring out that trend with the equipment that we've got over there in the field that our superstar Kendall's looking out after um, but what we can see when we go back over the data if you have a look over the months we can see that it drops from 60 to 59 almost goes into the territory of 58 and then back up to 60 and we are seeing this uh, frequently um, I think the latest data that's come from Canada shows it getting very close to 58, probably 58.5 at some points of the month and then goes back up gradually to 60 and then drops back off towards the end of the readings. So I think at this point what we was hoping to see, we are, we just don't, uh, we didn't expect to see it in the, the gradual chunks where it goes down and then back up. But we are starting to see a picture form, I believe, uh, looking at just a few months of the data that we've got now uh, from Canada. Um, you know, I think uh, it is a very slow process, this, um, you know, magnetic reversal, even though we're in a period of time where, you know, the uh, migrating North Pole is covering more distance than it ever has done. But what we have to take into consideration, it is a very big inertia, whatever's happening beneath our feet with the swirling molten core, which is the standard model of, you know, how we're led to believe that the magnetosphere is formed. And uh, for that reason, you know, it has from the start of the noticeable point where it started to migrate, took 120 years to get to this point. But what I will say is that from 1990s to this current day, it has doubled the amount of distance that it's covered. So, you know, we are expecting that at some point over the next 2.8 months to see something similar, especially when we go over that uh, 2.8 months, because as you know, we are about 2.8 months away now from that 40 degree mark where we did a few experiments, which showed when it hit that point, it should at that point begin to go into the weak field lines and therefore the reversal should take place on our planet. You know, it is uh, quite alarming when you think about it that we are very close to this event actually happening. And at the same time, you know, we're in a lot of mess with regards to what else um, is taking up our daily lives. And that is something I wanted to talk about um, in the other half of this video. So, you know, I think we're on track with the data that's coming from Canada. Uh, we didn't quite expect to see it going down in chunks and then back up in chunks but gradually uh, if we charted it all I'm sure we would see you know a decline even though a slight one I think what we would have liked to have seen is it start from 60 and then gradually work down to 60 uh, 59.8 59.5 and then gradually getting close to 59 it just isn't working the way we want it to but you know that's the whole point of doing this is to not only observe but to learn 
along the way. So the other part of this video, I wanted to talk about what um, Yaris was talking about, uh, the former Greek president, and you know, just give you my view take on this. And I know it's going to be controversial this topic, so you know, just remember, I'm just putting the idea out there for you guys, and you know, I'm really interested in what your views are on this because the way I see it is, we don't really have a lot of choice but to go um, forward. Uh, and accept some things but not all I think we still have a lot of um, uh, holding ground where we can make the decisions even as individuals we still have a lot of holding ground but I think what we need to do is just accept a few uh, facts about the things so I'm, I know I'm beating around the bush here I want to get into the second half of this video now but before I do I want to say a big thanks to the people that are supporting us um, you know, we're still trying to improve the content of these videos and, you know, I'll be using um, OBS for the second part of this video. But the main point is, is that, you know, we're, we're still learning. Although we're getting to grips with how to put images on and how to use the green screen, things like that. There's a lot of other things that goes into production, uh, as I've learned over the week. And that is getting the lighting correct, um, getting the uh, colour uh, saturations right, the brightness and setting um, you know the uh, green screen up or the chrono key so that you know everything looks you know at a reasonable standard of quality you know at the end of the day I'm not Hollywood I'm never going to achieve those same results I'm not a production engineer again for those reasons I'm not going to achieve them but you know I think I'm going to deliver after a couple of weeks time a lot better quality of content for you guys and I think you'll enjoy it a little bit more so just bear with me it's work in progress just like everything else big learning curve and with that let's get on to the second part of this video shall we so yesterday um, I asked you if you've got just a bit of spare time um, to you know have a watch of the video that Yaris had done on his talk and I don't know whether you, you, you cottoned on as to what he was getting at the end of that video he was talking about um, globalism and I can understand to some degree, and I know this is going to be a controversial su subject uh, for a lot of people, uh, but, you know, remember, we're just talking about things there. We're not actually suggesting these things. But, you know, I've got to, I've got to say that there doesn't seem to be any choice but to go forward with globalism. And I'll explain why my reasons are. Obviously, if you watched Yaris, you will see why he was saying that that seems to be the only way forward. Um as best to approach this okay so if we go back into history um he talked about the history but i'll just put it in my my way um you know if we look at the uk it, it had more than one king and you could say that um you know it was it was separated by you know more than one king and therefore you know uh, one part of the country was doing something different to the other part I'm not talking about Britain I'm just talking that there was many at one point kings even in England um, and then there was one in you know that's the, as the country got uh, or this continent got broke up into districts or you know um, states now I, I suppose that would be the best way of explaining it like Scotland and Wales uh, there would be a king there and there but you know we've come together uh, Britain has uh, as Great Britain and that was the natural progression over time and then we joined uh, Europe which was like um, you know again uh, a block of countries coming together now if you could just extend that to everyone being part of you know the European bloc giving it a different name like you know the uh, international federation um, we could all uh, work together as a team, probably coordinate the taxes of the around the world, and you know we we wouldn't have to have uh, so much um, you know immigrants around the world wanting to come to places like the United States for a better life and uh, better uh, human rights. If there was like a federation, or an international federation, I'm sure that it would be structured so that you know everything was the same globally. So. What I've just uh, described there very quickly is, you know, I think it's inevitable it's going to happen. You know, it has happened already. Um, I know that we have entered Brexit and I, I completely understand why people want to enter, the, you know, um, you know, uh, remove themselves from uh, the European bloc of countries because 
Um, for one, no one is elected. There isn't uh, the president of you know who's running U the European Union isn't hasn't been elected by any one uh, country or anyone from these countries. So he's a self-proclaimed uh, president of Europe, and that's not democracy, is it? Um, but if this could be done in a dem democratic way, uh, I think we could all benefit from it very big. I mean, if there was one pot of money, uh, you know, trying to fight COVID vaccine, you know, trying to develop a COVID vaccine and every country around the world put money into that pot, then, um, you know, the vaccine would come about a lot quicker. Um, if there was, um, you know, like the NHS here in the UK, we've probably got one of the most dearest uh, healthcare services uh, in the world. You know, people wouldn't want to come from other countries if if they had that as well themselves. So, you know, if we could come to some common grounds on some basic things that human beings need, like Yaris was talking about, one should be, you know, a fair wage uh, for that for the person that lives in that country, um, uh, a healthcare system uh, that that cares for people that doesn't require you know them to be bankrupt in order to still uh, be in receipt of medication or operations or whatever they need. I think that that um, would be beneficial for everyone, uh, and I and I think it's going to end up that way. Um, there's no two ways about it. At this point, I think we've got a couple of choices, you know, uh, with the global economy the way it is, and uh, I'm pretty sure global economists that are, you know know what they're talking about would probably agree with me. There is, if we don't get something sorted out pretty soon, there is going to be some wars taking place. So, we, you know, the two options we've got is, you, you know, all get together, um, you know, become a federation, an international federation, or I don't know people don't like the word globalism, but it's going to happen. Uh, it's just a matter of time. If we look at history, um, it is going to happen. What's the difference? I mean, there's 50 states in the U that make up the United, all 52 uh, that make up the United States of America. Uh, Britain was and still is uh, part of Europe, even though the Brexit is supposed to take place at any point in time. We don't, we don't know quite know when that will be. But, you know, there is something else that's looming on the back burner, and I think a lot of you guys that watch YouTube videos will be aware of that, and that there is a lot of global debt building up. And, um, you know, part of the uh, video that I was telling people to watch yesterday, Yaris does explain, you know, that this has got no other way to go um, unless it's going to collapse in on itself, so um, it's, it's a it's a situation which is uh, going to go two ways, and that's dependent on what we want. Uh, you know, I, I like I said at the beginning of this video, I think we've got a lot of control in this. Uh, I think um, an international federation could be a good thing for everyone. Uh, you know, there needs to be. Uh, a total responsibility of everyone on this planet to look after the environment and by having a federation that can be achieved uh, a global healthcare system uh, that doesn't bankrupt everybody that everyone is not barred from again it could work with an international federation and you know things like climate um, you know the truer aspects of climate like not what is the course according to mainstream media and you know governmental science departments that are seeing it as a way to raise taxes i'm talking about the actual effects like you know the planning for where the crops go around the world uh global food production things like that those are the things that can work under um a feder an international federation uh, of countries but you know in order to get this to work every country on this planet has to accept this this deal um and uh, you know we're just talking about it here um but the only other to, the only other way i can see us uh, moving forward is to actually go to war over the debts because when you turn around to someone that you owe a lot of money to and tell them that you're not going to get it and you're asking for a reset that might not go down too well with them and um yaris describes that a lot better than what i do but you know from my take and i did touch on the subject of talking about you know um our countries being separated by oceans 
And, you know, it's only oceans that separate us from other planets, only in a different different level, uh, space ocean, if you want to call it that. And, you know, you've got to, uh, I think you have to uh, be absolutely realistic. If you think that we are the only ones in the entire universe that have got to this stage and probably even progressed a lot further in technology than us, and if you think that they haven't worked out a way to get to our planet, then... I think that's just insane, uh, absolutely, completely insane to think that we are the only ones that uh, have managed to evolve how we have. Um, and I'm not going to go into the biblical texts or some of the things that our uh, ancestors have said on this planet with regards to these things and some of the cave paintings that I could show you because even though that would be really interesting, you know, it deviates from the point that we're at at the moment. And, you know, I'm just saying from the way I can see things is that, you know, it is, first of all, um, a progression uh, that we've seen happening over the years, which is naturally going to take us into uh, an international federation at some point. And, you know, we need to start thinking about this. It's going to happen. Um, you know, no one of us is going to stop it. Whether we like it or not, it is going to happen. And, you know, we need to realise that it's the natural progression of, you know, the way we do things today that would lead us into, you know, this federation. But the the thing I want to talk about is, which is very concerning, and Yaris touched on this, he said that the democracy is failing. Um, he did talk about, if I get this sentence right, he did talk about standing up at the European Union and... Um, he, he said something, and one of those, I think it was someone Wolf, uh, stood up and looked at him almost like with laser beam eyes and said, look, um, politics cannot uh, lead uh, global economics or something like that. Cannot be allowed to leave, lead global, global economics. So, you know, uh, we need to, you know, elect people that become part of this um, international federation that can talk for us and act on our better behalves and you know it's very difficult even not at the uh, international level for this to happen because of the you know the way that um, uh, democracy is going democracy is being destroyed by capitalism um, you know I completely agree with Yaris on that but this is a topic that we should talk about because you know, I don't see any two way, uh, any other than the two ways I've just mentioned that we are going to progress in the future. That is, of course, um, if the magnetic pole shift doesn't destroy us completely. And, you know, we might be um, at a precipice now that if we don't change our direction, then maybe that could go that way. You know, um, you know maybe nature might boot us uh, before we boot ourselves you know and what i mean by that is i said it would either be mass global war uh, over the uh, global debt or you know we will come together as an international federation on this planet and start you know really um, you know once we do that you know addressing some of these big issues and you know there wouldn't be any need if there was an international law uh, international uh, federation that had a healthcare system and everything else, there wouldn't be any need for people to want to migrate other than the climate being better, would there? In my view, anyway. So I'm interested in your views on, you know, the development of an international federation where every country in this world is part of that. And we uh, aim for a situation, hopefully, in the future where, you know, we all benefit and clearly there's no point having a federation if we don't uh, where, but there is one in place where we all benefit and you know we start uh, looking at the world's resources in a different manner you know where nobody is barred from them and that you know there is um, never a situation like what we're seeing now where pensioners have worked all their lives and they have to go through bins to feed themselves and they can't afford uh, to buy food because simply they're affording only the medication every month to keep themselves alive. You know, what sort of world do we live in? Um, you know, something has got to change. We cannot keep um, moving down the path of progression where our technology increases 
and you know removes uh, the labour intensive uh, workforce from the market because at the end of the day we live in a monetary system and we need to, a job to obtain you know or to exchange for uh, labour to exchange for cash so that we can participate in this monetary system if there isn't a job then there's only other two ways of uh, obtaining money one is benefits and the other is stealing it you know the, none of those two are desirable i believe for anyone um, you know we just want to be treated fairly get you know uh, back on track to being good stewards on this in my view this is by the way we want to get back on track to being good stewards looking after all the biodiversity on the planet and in turn the planet as well and at the same time having a good quality of life for ourselves tell me who wouldn't want that so i know the idea of um, you know international federationism uh, isn't something that a lot of people are going to like because it's frightening and there's been a lot of scaremongering about it but what other way would you like it to go because we're moving closer to the point where you know there, we are going to swing one into one two different directions we're either going out for war with every other country on this planet um, or you know we are going to um, come together all of us and you know work something out which would you prefer and you know if you can give me your reasons and um you know the only other thing is guys uh you know there's a link down there if you want to help support what we do at the observatory you know we are now more than ever putting a lot more work in uh to what we do we're trying to make these a little bit more presentable it's it's by all means not perfect yes i know sometimes when a tea uh, a talk you can see the back of the screen because it's dark in my mouth or you know that sometimes the uh video uh, bleeds into my t-shirt it's just down to you know fine tuning these things so that things look better and a bit more presentable and that we will get there uh just like we did with the um you know the programming of the magnetometer and the development of the electronics for those things so bear with us uh link down there don't be shy, you know, uh, it is one of the worst times for us at the observatory trying to raise funds and that is the only way we do raise funds because it's a public observatory and therefore requires um, public funding, unfortunately. That is the only way. Uh, we don't want corporate money here at the observatory and the reason for that is, is because they're going to be telling us what we can talk about, what we can't talk about and I bet you this probably would be one of the subjects they wouldn't want us to talk about as well as our main uh, topic which is the magnetic pole shift so the links are down there and it is appreciated okay I'll say what I usually do um, you know I'm going to continue tweaking uh, you know OBS trying to make it a little bit more presentable and get things a little bit better for us all and uh, meantime I'll wish you all the best take care and I'm sure I'll be back uh, in the next couple of days so as always bye for now